Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. It's time for the Bonnie Share Show, a whirlwind of wit, wisdom, celebrity, and the boomer life. With a little bit of this and a lot of that and so much more you don't want to miss, here's Bonnie! Well, hello and thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, my thanks to Wayne Cobbin for my superhero dupa theme song. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, okay. everybody's got to have a name. Um, I'm Bonnie Cher. I'm your host through the celebrity world, through the great boomer generation, and, of course, the online diabetes community. So thank you all for being here with us today. My guest today... Very happy to say um, my first guest is a stand-up comedian. Um, he writes for film. He writes for television. He writes because I think he writes great and just has to do it all the time. And that is the fabulous Steve Bluestein. Hello, Steve. And we also have with us today Mr. Brad Slate, also known as D Hero. Uh, he's my favorite funny type one diabetic, and I'm pleased that he's back with us today. Um, if you have a question or a comment, please call us at 323 843 2826. And you can follow us on Twitter at hashtag B Share S H E R Radio. So, without any further ado, settle in and please say hello to my friend Steve Bluestein. Yes. Finally got to that part. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's that, okay. That's like a longer lead in, but I wish I had. Oh, more. I had a shave. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> By the time yeah. it was finished. Well, you know, I, I got to get myself rolling here, and I yeah. already shaved, so it's oh, all good. Oh, good. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, one thing that amazes me, well, there are many, but what came to mind last night as I was thinking about the interview um, is the way you are so disciplined. Writers amaze me. I mean, anybody thinks that they could just, well, I could write that. And, but no, I mean, you write, con It's at least to my eye, and I read you, of course, on Facebook. But do you get up in the morning funny? I do. I actually, I do. I once had uh, some kind of surgery, and it, it included an endoscope. <laughs> and when I was coming out of, the, out of the anesthesia, and I heard the doctor, he said, he said, everything looks good. And I said to him, you didn't happen to find my garage opener, did you? <laughs> and he said that was the first time in 30 years that anyone had ever made a joke coming out of anesthesia. <laughs> well, we should have done an act. I did it on the way in oh. just before the open heart surgery. Oh. I, they, they hadn't hit me with the stupid juice yeah, yeah. yet. And there were a lot of people in there, you know. And I looked around the room and I said... Everybody get laid last night. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know they were in a good mood. See, I, I, I was different. I said everybody washed their hands. Oh, that's of course. What, that's what I cared about. <laughs> I don't care about their sex. No, life. I needed happy people. I do want to be grumpy working on you, but the, the hands thing is important. Um, last time you were on, we talked about your book or your latest book. Um, 
Are you writing anything new now? Um, no, I've. No. I'm. I'm not writing. I'm. Uh, uh, I'm just working on the stuff that's already been written. I have seven plays and two books and two films, and uh, I'm just working on those right now. Just. Well. <laughs> just, just a couple of things. I'm compulsive, you know. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I am compulsive. I do write every day. I write every day. I get up at 5, and I even if it's just getting on Facebook and, and writing, I write something every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the discipline that I so sorely lack. I, th <laughs> I think it comes from a deep-seated uh, fear that I'll, I'm a failure, so I have to keep proving myself over and over and over again, you know, so writing. Um, and uh, I don't know quite how to take that. I think that there's a delivery of the funny, but I think something very honest in no, there, I was, too. No, I was being honest. I was being honest. Well, I'm sorry if I see everything you say is, see is funny. No, but that's okay. I'm sort of pr you know, primed that way with you. That's okay. And um, one Something else that I have noticed on Facebook over the last couple of weeks is the way you have been promoting in only the best terms um, Elaine Boozler's attempt to raise money for a marvelous comedian named Max Alexander. Your commitment to this. Well, you know, it's, it's OCD. I have to do this. They, we set a goal of $60,000, and I have to raise $60,000. So... I'm consumed by it. I, I, and and it's it's for uh, something that I care passionately about. Max Alexander's is probably one of the nicest human beings you will ever meet, and he's beloved in the comedy community. And uh, you know he opened for Tom Jones for years, and he did the Tonight Show, and he and he was one of those people. He was a go-to person. If you had a problem, you went to Max, and Max would help you. I had. Um, Howard Storm, who's a director in mm -hmm. town, he called me and he said, I understand Max is sick. I said, sure. And then he said, um, well, where do I send the check? And, and he told me a story about what had Max had done for him. And it was one of these things where he connected Max with a, a, a doctor that helped, you know, helped a condition. And, he, and it's because Max is so kind that people have been so kind back. But we need to raise a, an additional $10,000. So you're 50, and that's phenomenal. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, my, the girl who cuts my hair gave me $5. I mean, nobody, made, oh. nobody who made it out alive, you know. <laughs> I mean, I have millionaire friends who I called, and I said, hey, I will start telling stories if you don't send me a check. And the check <laughs> came. I'm I'm into blackmail now. Um, gee, who could I hit up with a little blackmailology? Well, I mean, you have all. Will your you do listeners. me a favor? What? <laughs> what? Um, would you please, for those who may not know about Max's work, you've established that he's a phenomenal comic mm -hmm. and a menschy kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But can I mean? Can you kind of give us a picture? of Max's work and and why you've all committed to him so. Well, I thought I just did. <laughs> well, I was hoping for a little more, but um but I know his story, so I was able Well, I to, mean he you know, he's I mean, it's a menschy thing obviously for you to be doing, which is really why I brought this up. I think that um one of the most admirable things about being in our business is that we do look to take care of one another. We do, you know, from the actors. For the fund, most part, for the most part, I've had a couple of hangups, and I tell you, it's so much fun because I sit at my computer and go, delete, <laughs> delete. Absolutely. Yeah, I two people in particular who I will probably never speak to again, um, and they're probably voting for Trump. Oh, probably. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. <laughs> I hate to even give the man any airtime. No, dump on Trump. It's fine hey. with me. Um, well, Max, you know, Max had uh, needed a kidney about five years ago. And um, his... He, Do you know if Max is a diabetic? 
I don't know, but his brother was the match, a, a good enough, a good enough match, and so his brother gave him a kidney, and so he was doing fine until he developed this cancer on his on his face, and it really sent him it's a downward spiral, wow. and, you know, and he ended up in the hospital and. I spoke to him briefly uh, because he's, it's very difficult for him to speak. And he said to me that with every donation he gets, it, it just lifts his spirits because he knows that people care. And, you know, all the years that he worked are coming back, you know, uh, coming back to him. So it's a wonderful thing. And we should tell people where they can donate if they want. Um, absolutely. I think, though, it may be easier if we tell people to go to your page on Facebook where all of it is written out and all they have to do is tap, tap it. it. Well, and also, if they just Google Max Alexander Health Fund... There you go. It'll it'll come up and it'll go... Uh, you'll, it'll link well. you to the GoFundMe account and uh, you can make a donation. And let me tell you... Five dollars is a great donation. I, I said to my Facebook, I have 5,000 friends on Facebook. I said, if we raised, if everybody gave five dollars, right. we would raise twenty-five thousand right. dollars. But uh, I have to tell you, uh, some people have been magnificent. The Judd Apatow's foundation donated five thousand wow. dollars, and that just goes to who Max is. Uh, there are comics who want to remain anonymous, and because you can donate anonymously, a thousand dollars, five hundred. George, George Lopez, five hundred dollars, um, just without even asking a question. What does he need? And you know, and I sent out. Uh, I have a you know an email list of sixty-five comedians, and so I, um, I sent that out to them, and the response was immediate, just immediate. Uh. I, that heartens me to hear that. Yeah. Um, and of course, I wish him all the best. Yeah, we um, all do. It's, uh, but I mean, God forbid I'm ever in that position. You know who I'm calling, oh, don't thanks. you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I've already hit everybody I know for money. All right, you have a male comic. Now you give him the girl singer. Yeah. It's a. It's, well, um, yeah, you're, you're uh, it's a phenomenal thing that you're doing. I mean, well, it's, it's, you have to no. Let's start where credit is due, and that's Elaine Boozler. That's how I started it. Elaine, yes. Elaine started the GoFundMe account. Elaine and Max work together in Vegas, and uh, they're, yeah, and they're I, very I didn't know. yeah. Uh, Elaine was the headliner. Max Open, and they became very close. And uh, over the every time, Elaine has a place in New York, and every time they, Elaine would go to New York, they would get together. And so she was very connected. And it's because of Elaine Boozler uh, that I was um, brought on board. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and because of my OCD, I was able <laughs> to, you know, when I got on board, I brought a whole new. A whole new uh, address book, if you know what I mean. Elaine had gotten everybody your own solid gold Rolodex, right? Exactly, <laughs> everybody. So I and so I got those people on, and of course Elaine has a heart as big as this room. She has a, um, a, a an organization called Tales of Joy, and where she rescues and saves animals. I and, know I'm on her Facebook page, right? right and there. she's amazing. She's just amazing. So um, it was easy for me to do. Plus, I got plenty of free time. <laughs> what, I mean, what? I vacuum and then I go raise money for Max. He'd be very handy to have around. Eh? But you, um, well, I think that's phenomenal. So what? What do you want to do now? What? Well, I mean, do, I, do you want to just stand? Would you consider going back well, up again? Well, you know what? Here's the thing. It's kind of crossed my mind. How did I It's know? kind of crossed my mind. Uh, I'm so bored. I want to, I, I, <laughs> I just, you know, but, you know, when my the main thrust. But doesn't that feel good? I know that I could be the crankiest girl in the world, but you put me up on stage and it's yeah, but all that's, good. 
that's just 45 minutes of, in an entire... Well, it's better than feeling like shit 24 hours a day. I well, mean, I don't a... feel like shit. I oh, just, well, I'm bored. I did. <laughs> I'm just bored. I'm bored. And I miss the camaraderie with the other comedians. That's what I miss. That what I, I don't miss is the traveling and the crappy hotels no. and the egomaniac opening acts and the bad food. And, yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't miss any of that. I mean, oh. I was on the road for... 25, 30 years, you know, at home, home a week, out two weeks, home a week, out. And I remember I once was invited, pardon me for interrupting, but I was invited to somebody's home for dinner when I was out on a gig, and yeah. I swear to God, I left five bucks under, <laughs> under the plate because I forgot where I was. That's very funny. I used to say when I, I would get home, I'd go, look how big the soap is. <laughs> you know, it's like, so... Um, Yes, but what I what what I'm really working diligently on is my play Rest in Pieces. That is, uh, we had a production in Delaware to rave reviews and standing ovations, and um, that is what I'm trying to get to New York. And it's so hard, you know, it is so hard. Donna Pescow is connected. She's just a brilliant actress. Not only is she a brilliant actress, but she's probably one of the nicest people you want to meet in show business. And, or, or in life, she's just. There's no airs. There's no. There's no ego. There's no. She's, she's just like a, a real girl. She's just a real person yeah. who you like to be with, you know. So um, uh, we're. I'm working. I'm trying to get that. Uh, and, and and you know, it's it's you know, you have a group of friends, and they everybody says, you know, well, Steve's a writer, but no one really reads what you write. So one of my friends, Noni. Uh, Noni, uh, I can't remember her married name. She'll kill me. Uh, she uh, said, well, let me read this thing. So I read it, and she sent it to her, and she said, this is brilliant. I went, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, and I can't get anybody to read it. And she said, okay, fine. And she gave me the name of five big theaters. She called them, and she said, you have to read this play. So, I, you know, one afternoon I sent all these play, all these scripts out. I haven't heard anything. I'm still available, but um, I, I, it's it's my my uh, my uh, goal is to get this play produced. And you know, do you know Monica Piper? I know of her. I do not know. Her. Well, she Monica Piper wrote a one woman show, and she called me up one day and she said, "I'm coming to your house. I'm going to do my one woman show in your living room." And I said, oh, oh, great. <laughs> and then I shoved a fork in my eye. You know, I, who wants, you know. So she came over to my house, and seven minutes in, she had me hooked. She just had me hooked. And she ended the play, uh, you know, 90 minutes. She, I said, she said, what do you think? I said, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And then we gave her, I gave her a couple of lines to throw in, and she, which she uses in a play. And then she put it up here in Los Angeles for a month, and it ran for 16 months. My goodness. And it's going to open Sunday night in New York City off-Broadway. And its name is? Not That Jewish. Not That Jewish. Right, Not That Jewish. <laughs> well, my New York friends, that's another place and another wonderful thing to, for you to experience. Sometimes... I mean, it's nice to be here for the weather and the palm trees, I guess. But um, there is something about being, you know, I hear this friend or that one's going and doing it, and I so want to be there. I miss New York so much. I don't miss slipping on the black no, ice. No, I, I, I don't miss any of that. I hate being cold, but I hate being hot, too. Um, but I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I know. It I was know. a full-time job just to try and well, navigate your life and negotiate with everything's a negotiation. Well, are you going to hit me, Mister Boss? You know. And the, in New York, and my friends from New York come out, and they see my house, and and they say, "This isn't a house; it's a building." Yes. You know, because they said in New York there'd be eleven families living in this. And I laughed, and it's true. My huge New York abode at 888 8th Avenue, because, of course, I had to be right there in the theater district. I don't like the mm. what. Um, 625 square feet, uh, an alcove studio, 
for $3,500 oh, a month. You had an alcove? <laughs> I got an alcove. Listen, my my apartment was on 58th between 2nd and 3rd. And uh, the bathroom was so small. How small was it? I'll tell you that if the toilet seat was down, you couldn't close the door. And that is not a joke. That is actually what happened. You had to lift the toilet seat to close the door. That w- in, 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 in the alcove studio, the kitchen was about that big. And I had to, in order to open the one drawer, yeah. I had to first open up the oven. So I. <laughs> <laughs> well, my kitchen had six tiles on the floor. You know, and you it, were it, living uptown. It was a, it was one room. It was one room that is not as big now as my. Yeah. Uh, as were it, you a grown up this, when you were living there? Oh yeah, I was just out of college. Oh okay, I was forty five. I was, I, I, mean. was <laughs> I was twenty one. I was twenty, and I had no furniture, literally nothing. I moved in with a cot, and and uh, and I would pull stuff off the street in New York. I furnished. Oh, I know my, people who furnish. I, my whole apartment is off the street of New York, and let me tell you something. I'm still doing it to this day. I have a home in Bel Air and one in Palm Springs, and it's filled with crap I pulled off the streets. I love it. You could. You could, that would be a fun sale. And so. and one of my houses was in uh, on HGTV. Now I know where all that stuff is wound up. I know people who steal other people's plants, but this guy goes right for the No, project. listen, in my neighborhood. No, found. It's like found art. Yeah. And it, it's, it, and I mean, there's a chair in Palm Springs that I literally stopped the car, <laughs> pulled it, and just. Why am I not surprised? I mean, it's a, <laughs> it was a leather chair. And it was from the 50s, and, and I grabbed it. Black leather Don't you chair. like when they describe things as being mid-century? Century, yeah. Does that mean I'm mid-century? <laughs> I'm mid-decade. Well, you can be my mid-decade uh-huh. anyway and any time, Mr. Bluestein. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to put your hands together. But before you do, I almost forgot something. What? <laughs> Steve. What? People who don't know yet. How do they follow you? How do they know what's doing? All right. Well, there's stebluestein.net. He's That's, a net. I'm a net because somebody bought stebluestein.com. What they're going to do with it, I have no idea. But they bought it, and so I had to So I had to go to stebluestein.net. And could have been .org. Could, or, yeah, or <laughs> .tv. And then uh, on Facebook, it's there's Steve Bluestein. There's a couple of Steve Bluesteins on TV, but I'm the one. You're the, the funny one. I'm the funny one. You're the funny one. There's, there, there is a Steve Bluestein Who's with not the funny with the same birthday as me. Steve Bluestein, January fifteenth, the same birthday, and we couldn't be. He's like a vice president of funding or something, and and <laughs> we are so different. It's it's amazing. Um, he has no sense of humor at all. Because you got it. All. I got it all. And on uh, he was so cute when he did that. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, on on Twitter, I'm at Steve Bluestein, and it's B L U E S T E I N, Stein. Stein. Not Steen. Not Steen. Not Steen. It's not Steen. All right, Mister St- uh, Bluestein. I knew that. Yeah. You get me confused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love having you on. You just you're you're a terrific guy. And, oh, thanks. And I like the way you roll. Gotta say. Gotta thanks. Say. And I love the parking here. <laughs> Not only am I, but now, would you like me to get like a little parking hat? I can do that no, too. No, well, I, I, I think this I, is Hollywood. I know. I need a drive on from now on. <laughs> you just ask. And I just need a drive on. That's. I'm not putting. The, I'm not putting the Tesla in the street. I'm telling. you. I know. I'm surprised you would even come. I thought I was going to have <laughs> to send Uber for you. No, no. <laughs> You'd send Uber. <laughs> I would do it for you. Anything. Put your hands together, please, and thank Steve Bluestein. Thank you. You are listening to the Bonnie Share Show. Please join the conversation. You can call in at 323 843 2826 or you can follow or and you can follow the hashtag hashtag BeShareRadio at Twitter. 
Okay, coming up, a shout out from my soapbox, which is my take on who got it right, and my shout down to who I think should be horribly ashamed. Uh, but before that, I'd like to go to break with a great song uh, performed by a very, very talented singer named Marie Ann Marengolo, and it is It's a Good Day. Take it away. Moving along, yes, it's a good day. How could anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night, and it's a good day for shining your shoes, and it's a good day for losing the blues. Everything to gain and nothing to lose, cause it's a good day from morning till night. I said to the sun, Good morning, sun, rise and shine. It's a good day for paying your bills And it's a good day for curing your ills So take a deep breath and throw away your pills Cause it's a good day from morning till night I said to It's a good day for paying your bills It's a good day for curing your ills So take a deep breath And throw away your pills Cause it's a good day It's a good day Time we're all together. It is a good day. Thank you all for being here with me, and welcome back to the Bonnie Share Show. Joining me in this segment is, I'm happy to say, a friend of mine, um, Brad Slate, also known as D Hero, known as Slate Brad. <laughs> Lots of name. Names on Facebook is a member of the T1D community living right here in Southern, Southern California. Uh, so, hey, Brad, how are you? <laughs> Isn't it grand? The love, the love that's pouring out of the walls is just, you know, and it's great. And it's for you. And they're, and they're not deplorable either. That's what I like about them. <laughs> now, well, Bonnie, to tell you the truth, I got trouble. Right here in Melitus City. That's trouble with a T that rhymes with P. That stands for pancreas. I, 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 I got a bad I, one. You do. That's why I'm here. That's why you're yeah, here. That's right. Yeah. Little uh, you know, there's very little that's there. funny about being a diabetic. Um, however, if there was an award for the funniest T one, it's got to go to you. I mean, the work. To, first of all, the amount of time. 
It's I amazing. mean, not only do you maintain, I mean, I, I guess everybody needs to make a living. So, you know, yeah, you work and, and you do, but the amount of time that you put into the care and feeding of your Facebook community is just amazing. It is amazing. You I, are. And you're so tech savvy. And, and you, can, yeah. you can do all sorts of stuff. I can. You're pretty spiffy. Well, you know, a lot, a lot. I have a lot more time because when you say I live, I actually do live here, right here. Right, right here. Over there in the corner of your <laughs> studio. That's how I learn all my technical expertise, and that's why I have so much time to be funny about diabetes. Uh, I say. Yes, so right. tell me, really, um, what would you do if you didn't have diabetes? If I didn't have diabetes... How would your life be different? I'd eat a lot more pancakes. That's what I would do. <laughs> that's the first thing I would start with. Now, a person with diabetes can eat anything they want. Let's dispel that myth right now. The people say, you can't eat that. You shouldn't have that. Should you be eating that? Yes. Damn it. I can. And that's Should how you I be to asking it. me my business? That's right. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> Should you be living your life the way you look? Now I'm sounding like Trump, aren't I? Do you see, I, I don't want to date your show. I'd like to date you. I don't want to date your show, but... Oh, my God, uh, there is still hope. I've been wondering you. If you had a better pancreas, I would. Uh, sure, that's, that's what eat. they all say. We both can't be that messed up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> i got to date somebody who has a pancreas that works. That's my bottom line. I put that in all my dating ads. Looking for a woman who likes long walks on the beach, candlelight dinners... And is able to process glucose. That's what I put in my ads, Bonnie. I don't know about you. Where were we? I don't know, but I want to go back there. Let's go back there. Well, no, we were talking about the debate last yes. night. And, I, you know, it was great about it. Hillary did so well that Obama's brother-in-law demanded to see Trump's birth certificate. <laughs> That's how well she did. That isn't even a diabetes joke. See, I'm ambidextrous. Yeah, you are. You're amb is it like amber funny? Amber pancreas. Oh, yeah. I don't even have one. I'm going to do a toe. I don't know. But you know what I did want to talk about today? No, do tell. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the fact that it was nice to be here because you have air conditioning. Uh, is Yeah, I turned it on. <laughs> Is the big blue test. And I know your studio audience, you know, what, two, three hundred people out there, they're all wondering, what, what, Brad? Is the big blue test. What is it? And where is it? And how can I be part of it? Well, you can all be part of it very easily by going to bigbluetest.org. And what it is, it's a uh, Diabetes Hands Foundation, one of the biggest and best organizations for, for people with diabetes out there. That was Manny Hernandez. Manny Hernandez. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. we got Mike Lawson. We got Cynthia yeah. So We got right, all right, kinds right. of great people working over there. Uh, Even uh, if they're not funny. No, I'm sorry. Oh, they're all funny. <laughs> oh, Mike's, Mike's Mike it, no, Mike. Oh, is Cynthia's a, funny. They're all funny. But yes, the, the Big Blue Test is simply this. You go to the Big Blue Test, and what you do is you... You check your blood sugar, exercise for 14 to 20 minutes, check your blood sugar again, and record uh, that number. And there's usually a drop of like, I think, 20% in your blood sugar. And for every test you take, the sponsors donate uh, money to help get supplies and uh, education for people with diabetes all over the world. It's not funny, but it is fun. And it's something you can, look, people are doing it right now. You can't look! Look! Oh my God! They're just—they're checking their blood sugar, and they're not even—they don't even have diabetes. They don't even have <laughs> we passed out little kits, glucose testing kits, to everybody in the audience, because we know they like to prick their fingers. Well, and I am the biggest prick in Hollywood. That's what I've been told, because well, I do every day. Yeah. Many times, you're a multi-pricker. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> On that note. Um, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a way to get some money moving in and uh, something that people can relate to and go ahead and do it. And And I sure hope you do. And it is the big blue test. So check that out on your dot .org list. You know, the Diabetes Hero Squad uh, makes a little video every year to kind of get out to our people. Our, the long reach of the Diabetes Hero Squad, which is about this far. And uh, we make uh, the animated characters talk about the Big Blue Test and tell people about it and, you know, educate. It just so happens. No. <gasps> yeah. You are a psychic. 
Usually I hear psychotic, so psychic is already a step up. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we have that clip. Wow. Can we please roll it? <laughs> I'm Captain Glucose, and I just took the big blue test. I'm Meter Boy, and I also just took the big blue test. I'm D-Girl, and I took the big blue test, too. The big blue test is a program of the Diabetes Hands Foundation. To raise awareness of the importance of exercise. In connection with diabetes management. So here is all you have to do. Test your blood sugar. Exercise for 14 to 20 minutes. Test again. Then share your experience between October 14th and November 14th on BigBlueTest.org. For every test, you experience a 20% average drop in blood sugar. When you do the Big Blue Test, a donation is made by the program's sponsor to help others around the world with diabetes in need. So remember, all you have to do is... Test. Get active. Test again. Share. Take the Big Blue Test. Do it today and join the movement. Well, are you all ready to do it? Go ahead on. By the way, why don't you send me a little video clip of you doing this very thing? I'd really like to see that. Oh, that would be great. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be a multiple entries are encouraged. Multiples. Multiple. <laughs> like my personality. <laughs> multiple personalities are encouraged. And that's what I also put in my dating site ads. Because one girlfriend is not enough. I, I really did try the date, the <laughs> online dating thing once. I don't know what I was thinking. They probably think it was horny. Um, well, if they but, really wanted to be successful with people. But I with wrote, if you like pina coladas and taking walks in the rain, keep reading. I'm not the girl for you. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe you spelled pina wrong. Uh, folks. Uh, yeah, no. But I always thought that there should be a diabetes uh, dating site where you match people up with functioning pancreases, because I would join that one in a minute. Uh, uh, I'd like to go out with you. I'd like to have you in me. You know what I mean. My pancreas. Just the pancreas. <laughs> oh, look at that. They're testing still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to go exercise, and you know what we mean. <laughs> Whatever exercise you feel comfortable with. This could with. be a... <laughs> Or, or, yeah, yeah. By yourself or with someone else? Or with a group. With a who? A group. A group. <laughs> of course. A Why group not? glucose group. A circle test. A <laughs> I knew there was humor in diabetes. <laughs> I, I know it. I know I it. All way. you have to do is meet and know Brad, and you get, you get the giggle. Um, I'll pretty much do anything. For a good giggle. So, uh, <laughs> Better than a Klondike bar, aren't I? Outstandingly so. <laughs> anyway, um, I unfortunately have to end our interview for today. But um, again, I'm going to pose the question to you to, for our listeners to follow your funniness and your kindness and your information, because I find that somewhere in each of the memes that you memes that you create is it a meme or a mem? I think it's called a meme, but um, you it's know, a meme. Depend on what country you're from. Meh, meh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that you it's do. Meme -me, it's right? a meme. -me. Um, that you do impart a lot of information through that humor. So I think that's very cool, my very own self. So okay, we now. Here's the trick to finding Brad <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook. You would think it would just be, oh, go to Brad Slate, and there he would be. Yeah. Well, sort of, okay? <laughs> but if you're looking for who, also known as D Hero, which I think is more your diabetes page than Brad Slate, which right. is about you 
without your diet. Well, I guess how do we be without well, I'd our like to diabetes? separate the two. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I, I tried, but it's sometimes. In any case, to find him on Facebook, it's Slate Brad. Get that he reversed it when Facebook wouldn't let him know be known as D Hero. The anymore. dyslexic diabetic. No, it yeah, it's D here. I think if you put in D here, you'd find oh, it. No, it'll it'll switch it right yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the Diabetes Hero Squad uh, dot com, and of course the Big Blue Test dot, dot org, which isn't me, but it's something that's going on right now that we want to encourage Fabulous. everybody to do, like the studio audience has. And you've all been great. About you really are. Good really, thank you all right. very very from the bottom of my heart and his and the bottom of my beta cells. <laughs> The Isles of my Langer hands. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I like the Isles of Langer hands. They had a nice beach there. And, you know, Having I, a great time. Wish they, I was well, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be here any old time you want, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Brad, thanks for dropping by, and thanks for telling everybody about the big blue test. And I'm going to go home and try it now. I am. Oh, good. Yeah, I can't do it here, but I'll do it when I get That's home. right. No, okay. it's it, it, that's the thing about it. You can do it anytime, any place, with anybody. I like your That's style. what she said. That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brett Slate. <laughs> I, of course, want to thank Brad for sitting in with me today. And if any of you type ones out there would like to be with me as a co-host, my very special T1 co-host, it's very simple. Write me, bonnie at bonnieshare.com. Or you can go to bonnieshare.com slash blog and send me a, a little note. That'll work, too. Um. I hate to end this segment, but it is time for my soapbox. First, I'd like to give a shout out to actor, dancer, choreographer. He's a film distributor, uh, a director, a screenwriter. Um, and I'm talking about Mr. David Winters. Um, David, in his early work, you probably would remember him on stage on Broadway in West Side Story, and then in the film, David played Ahab. Um, he has been in the industry, I think, for six decades now. Um, he actually was the director of the Barbara McNair show, which was my very first TV appearance as a singer. Anyway, David, um, I'm thrilled to say that um, David's cancer-free. Um, it all happened very, very quickly, and a very large tumor was found on his face, and uh, things were not looking good, and... Um, it was just released yesterday, or perhaps the day before, that David is now cancer-free. So as long as we're talking about members of the entertainment world caring about one another, we really are a very fine club. And I am so very proud to be a member of it and most thrilled that David will be able to continue his work because it just has to be that way. So, next for my shout down, um, this was reported by the Daily Cause. Um, Donald Trump um, uttered these crazy words doing one of his um, appearances. And he, he said them to Alex Jones um, during an appearance on the Round Texans InfoWars program in December. Jo Jones, for those who blissfully haven't heard about him yet, 
um, is an ultra-right conspiracy theorist who believes that the United States government was behind the Atlant- the I'm sorry the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, the September 11th attacks, and is poison and that the government is poisoning our drinking water in order to turn American citizens gay. Um, He also, by his own admission, is a very close advisor to Trump. Uh, I think that Jones's most despicable uh, theory um, is his belief that the Sandy Hook massacre was staged. Um, And this, um, according to the article... uh, the Republican presidential nominee of the United States is being advised by a delusional sociopath. It speaks for itself. Uh, what else can you say about it? I really wasn't going to go on the Trump trail again, but the more I hear and the more I read, um, the more I knew I had to say something. Um, I am terrified that um, people will start to dig in to his sort of hateful and unconscionable actions. Um, I guess that as a woman who has been accosted, his comments sent me into hyperspace. And um, just say no. That's all, man. Just say no. Anyway, uh, that's my show for today. And if you have something that you would agree with or you disagreed with, go ahead and sound off. You can write me at bonnyshare.com backslash blog and let me know what you think. Uh, Well, that is my show for today, and I hope you'll return next week for another 50 minutes of celebrity, of the great boomer generation, and of the strength, love, and caring which exists within this very special community of type 1 diabetics. Um, A special note of thanks to Corey Bowen of Crown and Anchor Jewelry for outfitting me one more time. Um, And these are what we like to call beautiful. No, there's another term for them. They're layering pieces. That's what they are. Um, This one is made of topaz with 14 karat gold beads, all hand strung on 14 antide on 14 karat gold wire. And this one is multi stones. It actually is eight feet long, so you can tie yourself. No, Um, it's a great piece too. See how nice, sparkly. Thank you, Corey for putting this on me in exchange for his for the promotional consideration. Love saying that. Um, visit him online. Uh, you can get a direct link to him on the bottom of bonnyshare.com or you can find him on Twitter, uh, Crown and Anchor Jewelry. Uh, well, my friends, you're no doubt aware of the special role that the late Sammy Davis Jr. played in my life. Uh, He was my mentor, and he was my friend. So I've decided I want to end this show Carol Burnett style with a nod and a wink to you, Sammy D. I miss you, man. Take us away. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong Whether I find a place in this world or never belong I gotta be me I gotta be me What else can I be? I want to live, not merely so.
Somebody else, if I'm not right for 